Hello guys, welcome to Pega React Startup Act Tutorial 3. In this video, we are going to learn about the Pega DX API v1 more in depth. Currently, I am logging using the admin operator ID of the Cable Connect Sample app, which came as part of the Pega React Startup Pack. Once I log in, I am navigating to help icon and selecting Pega API. You can also open this landing page, switching to Admin Studio, Resources, APIs. But as this contains more clicks, I am opening from the Help menu from now. In the drop-down, you can see Pega API V1 and V2 DX API. V1 Pega API is nothing but DX API version 1 and currently the React Startup Pack supports the same. We will look at the DX API version 2 in the upcoming parts of my tutorial even though the React Startup Pack is not configured to use these APIs. I will try to run some requests and walk you through the responses and if possible we can try exploring the differences between V1 and V2 responses. For now we are sticking to V1 Pega API. As you can see there are a lot of categories under Pega Pega API V1, Application DevOps, System Management, User Management, Decision Strategy, Data Privacy and Docs. Out of all this, we will be concentrating on the application category as this category contains the APIs related to case management like getting list of case types, opening assignment and getting case details. All of these APIs are simple and require few parameters. As you can see, most of the APIs requires only one or two parameters. Before starting hitting an API, we need to do two things. The one is checking the authorization of the service package app of these APIs. All these APIs use the service package called API. This is a service package that comes out of the box with the same configuration. As you can see, by default, from the out of the box, this checkbox will be checked in so that we have to use the HTTPS port in order to trigger these APIs. For simplicity, I uncheck this that require TLS or SSL for a service in this package and kept the basic authentication type as is. So all I need is now even a HTTP port, whatever the currently it is there, it will work and uh, whenever I'm requesting the hitting the API I have to provide the basic authentication details like username and password and also we need a sample case to work on to hit these APIs so that whenever we hit the API it should be having some data to send it in response so as you can see I already created a service case type s1 and uh, Currently, I am in the stage of new service. And coming to the assignment, currently the assignment details are I am at the assignment called address. I am using Postman tool for this exercise of hitting the API and uh, looking at the responses. The first API we will be concentrating is on the get cases API. So to give background on what this API does, let's go back to the studio, Pega API help. As you can see under cases category, we have something called get cases by ID. So here one can hit the this API by passing a parameter, which is nothing but the case ID to get the details of that particular case. In our scenario, we are going to get details of this S1 case. So all I need is a parameter which is which I should be sending as part of ID. So as you can see here, this is the same API. This is the same API URL and uh, this is the, the last value is a parameter. So once I hit the API, this is how the response is going to be. So as part of this response, we have different fields like case type created by and its ID and what actions it have, update case details, change stage, etc. Along with that, the assignment information, what all assignments that are part of this 
work object and its content and finally the stages new service connected result these are the same as you can see in the ui new service connected and result another api we will be analyzing is the assignments api this api will return the authenticated users list of assignment with that saying whenever we hit this request we have to for the requested user what all the list of assignments that are assigned to him will be written by this api just to reiterate all this api should have are supported with the basic authentication with that saying we have to provide the username and password under the auth tab coming back to the tutorial as said this api will return all the assignments that are assigned to a particular user we can also co call this as a work list assignments so as you can see this assignment this api doesn't have any parameters once i hit the api the return list of assignments are nothing but that are assigned to this particular operator admin.cableco moving on to the third api in third api we will be looking more details with respect to this assignment with that saying this is the api that we are going to hit as a description says returns a single assignment details given its id as you can see this api will request a parameter called id which is nothing but the assignment id that we might get in the second api response as, as seen earlier so copying it on in the third api and hitting the api so as you can see this is a response that is formatted in terms of more in depth of a particular assignment we even got the action buttons for that for that particular assignment the main button is a submit and the second one is a cancel and after action buttons we also have optional actions that are part of the assignment just in case if you're not sure what the optional actions optional actions are nothing but the extra actions that are supported during perform an assignment these optional actions do not advance the case in the case flow they just introduce a intermittent screen or flow on submit of which the case comes back to the main execution flow in this scenario this particular assignment is having three actions the primary action is address which is the first action and the type is also as an assignment as you can see here and the few other are py case details and py change stage as we all know these are some of the common actions common local actions which don't have impact on the case processing flow and therefore as you can see the address is labeled as type assignment but whereas these other actions are defined as defined as case type that means these actions are defined on a case level instead of the assignment level it's very good that pega is differentiating what are what are actions what type of actions uh, that are written by the api moving on to the fourth api as you, as we all saw what are the actions that are part of assignment we will be going in depth of a particular action so for this i am going to hit the api which is nothing but get assignments passing the assignment id and moving into the actions of that assignment and giving a particular action id in this scenario we'll be examining the same assignment but we'll be examining the address action this time which is nothing but you can think of this particular flow action as you can see this requests two parameters and postman allows to define the path variables as defined below so the first parameter first path variable is the id and the second one is the action id the id is nothing but the assignment id and whereas the action id is the action name after defining it here i reference those path variables by including a colon before them now let's hit the api 
for simplicity I, I'll copy and format this so that we can see more in depth about the response so after formatting this is on a high level view of the response of the API so as it as I said earlier the fourth API get assignments ID actions action ID if you look at the description returns details about an action that can be performed against this assignment including its fields either within a view or a list so you can simply treat this as a API that will actually sense the view information of a particular action so as you can see the root node is view in pega view can also be called as section which is used to represent the ui for the user and few attributes of this ui are view id address and the name and the class to which it applies and inside that we have something called groups under groups the layout which type of layout the section is using as you can see here it is a simple layout with a stacked format under this we are we are having five attributes called fields if you actually look at the screen this is the same number of fields that are present in the, in the ui so let's expand the very first one so here the field is nothing but labeled as treat so that is a very first field in the UI and if you look at the few other parameters of that control we have the label and its type whether it is required or not and its label and whether it's disabled and even the test IDs or as all of us know test ID is a unique attribute that each control will have so that it can be differentiated from the other elements in the particular section and few other attributes are related to its mode configuration editable mode readable mode etc and also we also see the visibility attributes visible true and read only as false this api is a major api that is a proof of all the concepts that we are talking about the dx api as we discussed, DX API returns the UX information along with the regular data about a piece. Now we can see the UX information is written by this API in real time. Let's change the layout type from a single column to double column. As of now, the contents are displayed in a one column. Let's change it to two columns and see whether the API returns the updated layout details without any extra changes. I'm clicking on the change to change the layout type and choosing the layout type as two columns. And moving few fields state and postal code to the secondary column now clicking on save now let's hit the api one more time Copying back to the formatter. So as you can see earlier, we have only one layout. Whereas now we got two layouts and also the group format has been changed to inland grid trip double. And uh, if you observe the first layout, we will have three fields. whereas the second layout will have two fields the first layout is having three fields and the second layout are having two fields and even if you refresh the ui from the pega 
the same will be displayed. There you go. As soon as the section layout is changed in Pega, the API starts sending the update layout in the real time. With this understanding of DX API, how they work and how they return the response, which not only includes the data, but also the UX information, we are now ready to jump into the React Starter Pack and let's explore the React Starter application that has been provided and see how these APIs are configured in a React application to get called and to format the UI. These things will be part of my next video. 